I think should be a lot of fun. I hope it is. Um, something a little bit different. I have been doing a lot of studying of the Seattle Seahawks defense, specifically their pass defense. Prior to this season, as far as great pass defenses in NFL history, great defensive units in NFL history, you know, we have the steel curtain of the 70s, the 85 Bears, the 86 Giants, the Baltimore Ravens, the 2002 Tampa Bay Buccaneers, so on and so forth. I mean, a lot of great units in the NFL. The Dome Patrol of the New Orleans Saints, a forgotten great defensive unit, in my opinion. The Atlanta Falcons Blitz Grits defense of the 70s, another forgotten unit because their team was just so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Do a YouTube search for the Blitz Grits, the Atlanta um, Falcons Blitz Grits defense, and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> but anyhow, the reigning team of defensive units, at least as far as pass defense goes, is a 2002 Tampa Bay Buccaneers, at least statistically, as far as any statistical metric you want to go, completion percentage, yardage, QB rating, what have you, the 2002 Tampa Bay Buccaneers have reigned supreme. Now, with Seattle's performance in the Super Bowl, shutting down Peyton Manning and that record-setting um, offense, that has been challenged. Their supremacy has been put to the test. Is Pete Carroll's scheme the new standard of NFL pass defense? Well, there's a couple of things that will determine that. Well, one, you have to take into account era, the 2002 Buccaneers as well as that um, Baltimore Ravens Super Bowl winning unit, they kind of came along at the right time as the league was starting to transition into a more wide open spread attack, spread passing concepts, and really the spread um, really dominating all levels of college football and the NFL and the high school ranks. So you got to take that in consideration. When you take in the rules that we're playing under now, that has to be taken under consideration as well. Past defenses have the odds greatly stacked against them. And I think from what I've seen of Seattle, uh, both by scouring the film archives and Remembering a Super Bowl performance was just how physical they were able to play given the rules that are in place. I feel like they play as physical as you possibly can with receivers as the rules allow, and they do it phenomenally well. And what you're going to see, at least in this uh, tape here that I'm going to be looking at and reviewing and breaking down for you guys, is... When you have talent and you have them drilled to play in a specific system, you can be very, very basic on defense. Calling defense is very, very simple. There's very little confusion or disguise going on here. They just line up and they execute what they do to a T. Now, bringing the comparison back to the uh, 2002 Tampa 2 Buccaneers, and also that great Baltimore uh, Ravens squad as well, Pete Carroll, you know, tying it all together, is a 
Monty Kiffin disciple. Uh, Monty Kiffin serves as his mentor. <laughs> Ironically enough, he coached under Monty Kiffin. He learned a lot of his um, schematics when it comes to fronts and gap control and coverage leverage from Monty Kiffin. He took that uh, defensive system to USC, implemented it there. The difference, obviously, is that Monty Kiffin turned the standard too deep uh, cover two coverage into a cover three with a Tampa two. Carroll plays out of the cover three at the base, but their concepts are very, very similar, as you'll see. And I'll talk about as I, you know, go on through this video. Now, Saban does something similar with his Liz Rip pattern match out of the 3-4, uh, where he basically pattern matches the seam with the um, curl flat defenders. The corners and the deep safeties, they have their deep thirds. The um, backers, they have their hook zones. Now, he basically pattern matches with the um, curl flat safety and the curl flat backer or dime or nickel back, what have you. And the idea is to uh, make it harder for those seams to get um, dashed through four verts and through smash the common you know, zone flooding type of plays like Texas, uh, sale, pole, etc. He has mentioned that he came up with the idea when he was uh, working under Bill Belichick. Why does everything have to come back to freaking Bill Belichick? <laughs> but um, when he was serving under Bill Belichick, he started to come up with this system as a way of playing cover three and cover one pretty much all in the same package. Like I want to go back to this, you know, clip here. Let's replay that. This I think is cover one. And this is really as exotic as the Seahawks get. Sherman is always on the left. This idea of him being this cover corner, always following a number one receiver around is is not the case. He's not Darrell Reeves. He's not Patrick Peterson. He's more like Rod Woodson. He's excellent at what he does, but I think his reputation as a cover guy, pure cover guy, is a little bit overblown. Brandon Browner, He's the one playing press more often than not. This looks like straight man here. They come out in too deep. This is a run play before. Out of an over front it looked like. They actually come out showing too deep here. It's not going to stay that way for very long. Earl Thomas drops down to Rob. Cam Chancellor is going deep, and this is straight man to man. Nothing. <laughs> straight four man rush. So the look like at the delayed blitz there, perhaps. Too many guys are coming there. One, two, three, four. Then 50, he recognizes the back is not coming out, so he tries to join the rush. And it's press all the way around. Look at Brandon and Brown, a manhandle Reggie Wayne. Really physical. Really physical there.
A in the box. This time Sherman is showing press. Is he going to bail or is this man? Run. Four three over. Cam Chancellor's in the box. I really underestimated how good Cam Chancellor is and how versatile he is. That's a thing that really caught me by surprise when I was talking about Super Bowl and analyzing that matchup. Chancellor, in my opinion, after watching all of this, and I've watched several games, is really the engine that makes this thing go. Because he can play at the line of scrimmage, and they can run their base 4-3 package out of the nickel with him playing either weak or strong side backer. You see Sherman here. Watch how they align. Brandon Browner is pressed up here. He's showing bail now. Sherman is always on this side, always on the left for the bottom of your screen. He's playing with cushion more often than not. Slot corner here. You see Chancellor showing here. You're going to be coming again single high. It's going to be single high over and over and over again. Yep, Chancellor's coming. As long well as a slot corner. That's kind of what's some pressure. You can't live off a of four-man pressure alone. Looks like there's only one down lineman. There's two down linemen here. Again, no surprises here, no disguise. This time Sherman is lined up in press. This is a 4-3 over, it looks like. Chancellor is your deep safety this time. Brandon Browner is playing the... This is like how Rex employs Revis and Camardi back when he had them, where Revis would just be on an island, and he would combo coverage around Camardi. It's kind of the same idea, because Sherman's going to have the third by himself all the time. Still single high. Bringing four. Luck has a scramble. No, it's a dump off. I thought that was a scramble initially. It's kind of hard to tell if it was man or a zone. Nope, this zone straight drop back. Straight drop back of the linebackers there. Chancellor allows them so much versatility. Chancellor and Earl Thomas allows them so much versatility. They're in a three. Wide receiver set, and they're in their base package. Sherman is showing press all the way. Browner bails. Looks like a combo coverage with um, Sherman on an island and Browner in zone on that side of the field. Looks like Sherman had man coverage. Again, that's a Rex Ryan uh, type of play where 
he would have Revis on the island on the third on the side of the field, and everyone else is in zone. Yeah, he's got one. He's got a spy man for man all the way. There's definitely a combo coverage for Sherman in man coverage and the rest of the defense in the zone. Base pass rush. Good push. When you can rush and cause this eruption with four, it just makes life so much easier. Single high again. Empty backfield, you to bring pressure. A little bit of a swing screen. Again, base personnel. This is an over. Wide nine. He flexes out. Surprise, surprise. Single high. Four wide, and they're again in their base personnel. That's vintage Monty Kiffin right there. And they can do this because they're so athletic on the outside with their safeties and with their outside backers. Three man rush. That time. I think that looked like a three man rush. Poor Reggie Wayne. <laughs> he had a rough one. <laughs> Three-man rush. They had the um, elephant backer dropping back. Looks like he was the elephant here. Yeah, he drops back, peels back. That's straight cover three. They don't disguise their intentions. They say, here's what we're going to do, and we're just better than you at it. Nothing here. Press the look all the way. Shows press bales, a little bubble screen there. Carl Thomas just wrapping up. This is an over front. They're in over or under the vast majority of the time. I don't see them stacked very much. Again. Over. Dropping down. That's a man all the way, it looks like. Sherman's always going to have that deep sideline, or a deep third on that sideline. It's all about controlling your gap. Let's 
straight up on the straight up on the center and the zero technique. Got this gap here, B gap, B gap, C gap, C gap. This big guy's got that A gap. That wire just comes in clean. No one on him. Avril Bennett Mabane. McDaniel, they do a good job. Ooh, a buster there. What happened here? T.Y. Goodbye. Gave someone a roasting. Let's take a look see what happened there. Let's go back there. Who got schooled? Browner showing press. This is straight cover three. Very interesting how they go cover three press on one side of the field and Sherman bailing. Looks like a delayed blitz. Sherman got lost. That's, that's on Sherman as opposed to Earl. Or maybe not. Let me go back. Again, Sherman's always going to have that deep third on the sideline. And you see, that's that um, sail. The corner route and the streak. So basically, it's both their fault. <laughs> if you look at it here... You gotta look at these things two or three times in order to get a feel. Here's the conflict right there. Late to find that seam. Sherman was kind of playing over the top of this flag. Let's go back a little bit. This is straight cover three. Slot seam. You know the rules. You gotta find that seam, Earl Thomas. And Sherman is caught here. And Earl does not get on top of T.Y. enough. Now, T.Y. can book. And he just splits that seam and Luck delivers the strike. I really like Andrew Luck. He's, he's got a lot of Aaron Rodgers in him. Got a lot of Aaron Rodgers. Just from the other angle. How many did they bring on their rush? Five-man rush. Straight zone. Just got busted. Sherman was caught 2-1-1, and Earl was late getting over and in to find the seam. And you see them both arguing with each other. <laughs> I initially thought it was Sherman's fault. Then I looked at it again and saw it was Earl's. <laughs> And they're, and they're saying the same thing. Hey, you got him. No, you got him. No one, none of us got him. Touchdown. Going back to that last clip, we saw two of the best players 
arguably at their positions, Sherman and Earl Thomas bust the coverage. And <laughs> when I look at that, you know, how many times do we hear nonsense out of these in the virtual world from the yakety yaks when discussing Madden? Talk about, oh, well, NFL players, they don't miss assignments. They don't blow signals. Yes, yes they do. They miss, players miss calls. Guys get assignments wrong. It happens. Offensive coordinators are not dummies. And neither are DCs. They paid a lot. They get paid a lot of money to make the opposing units look foolish. What we got here a little play action pass. What kind of front was that? It looked like one of the defensive ends, Clemens, it looked like kind of flexed in or flexed out rather. Who we got here? Bruce Irvin gets a sack. And you see, 91 is Clemens, or is that, um... What's his name? I think that's Clemens on your right. This is basically a 3-4 look out of a 4-3 four, four, personnel. Again, versatility. You see Bruce Irvin here, he puts his hand on the dirt to kind of tip off that he's rushing. And the defensive end on the right, he's kind of in that, you know, jack linebacker, elephant linebacker role. This is a hybrid front, basically giving a 3-4 look at a 4-3 personnel. Do they roll Chancellor into the box here? No. Play action. Five man rush. I think it's a five man rush. How many people rush or did uh, Clemens drop back? Yeah, five man rush. You see Clemens are dropping him back, bracketing Wayne. a little bit of a hybrid look there. Versatility. They're in that look again, it looks like. Nope, this is straight single high. Straight 3D. You see Chancellor here in the slot. This is a nickel, it looks like. Sherman with a little bit of cushion. Browner. Earl Thomas in the middle. Slot. Corner. And you see as they squeeze down here on these hooks... It becomes man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Earl Thomas has to find the seam and look to give help. Now, the way Nick Saban's uh, cover three pattern match would work is let's say these one of these guys or both of them break and continue down the seams. Chancellor and or the nickel back would need to pick him up and extend his uh, drop to account for that. And Earl would be responsible for uh, picking him up and uh, carrying him down the field, down the seam. But here, the tight end and the slot break off, so 
they squeeze down and you have man to man on the outside again forcing the throws to the outside and protecting the deep middle it's Tampa 2 principles but out of a uh, single high uh, three deep look but the same theory protect the deep middle force the ball wide where there's um, where you have the contest by the corners and also the sideline as the uh, extra defender. You see them both, you know, leveraging the sidelines there. And they get bailed out by a pass interference penalty. Dicey call there. A little bit of a nickel sub package here. Bringing five in a long yard of the situation. Force the ball wide. That's a much tougher throw for the QB to make. And here's that flex hybrid front again, it looks like. Again. Same look, showing press across the board, single high safety, over and over and over again. The Seahawks are not sim. <laughs> they keep on playing the same coverage and the same look. Stack the box here, both corners showing press. A little reverse there. This looks like a straight over. Chancellor in the box. Kind of catch him in a misdirection there. Yeah, that'll happen. When you're flying upfield, that's a good way to keep guys honest and to get them back reading their keys. Again, same song, different verse. Show and press. Chancer is coming down to be a glorified outside linebacker here. Stacked look here. Chancellor's versatility again. He allows them to do so much. He can fill virtually any role. He can be Derek Brooks. He can be Troy Palamalu. Doesn't really matter. Play action. Everyone flows pretty well. No one really busts their keys in a four-yard game. Again, here's that hybrid look. Defensive end. Standing up. Chancellor in the box. So they can bring in... They don't really need to go dime. I mean, Chancellor can do so much. They can run their four force base stuff out of nickel. See outside linebacker flex out to cover Fleener here. So. The outside backer is basically serving as a nickel back, and this is basically a 4-3 stack with Chancellor playing the will. Look how fast Wagner 
diagnosis pass here. He's not fooled at all. Very, very well schooled team. Again, robber, single high, press. And is, is this going to be man or is it going to be zone? This is a um, under front. See the wide nine there and the five technique here. One technique, three technique. Chancellor rolls into the box again. Where are you going to run? He's got to command that double team. He's going to scrape down to keep the um, will and the mic clean. A gap. B, B. A, B, C gap, D, D slash C. He's got outside contain. Chancellor is going to come down for added support. But sometimes it's all about just whipping your man. Plugging your gap. Not being moved, like right here. This place done right here. Boy, a cam chancer can play strong safety for me any day. Too high. Out of this, all this footage, you finally see too high. And this is straight two men under. The Madden Defense of Champions. <laughs> so finally, we see some two men under. This is a base two men under. Nothing fancy there at all. Very vanilla. So you're seeing an abundance of Cover three, cover one, mainly four man with some five man rush. This is a robber. Again, they look like they're going to be in too deep there. But they don't stay in it. Is it two man under again? Nope, now it's a robber. And this is man coverage all the way. And T.Y. Hilton just makes a great effort. T.Y. Hilton really competed on that because that was looking dicey for luck. Luck gets flushed. Everyone's pressed up. And it's looking kind of bleak right here, doesn't it? Luck keeps the play arrive. T.Y. breaks in. Completion. T.Y. really competed hard in this game, boy. Great effort. Looks like they're bringing five. Luck is really good. He's a really good player. He's got a lot of Aaron Rodgers in him. Robber. Here comes Cam Chancellor. He's getting to drop.
nothing. Where are you going to run? When you can control the line of scrimmage like, like this, it makes the things a heck of a lot easier. Under front again, wide nine, three, one, five. A gap, B, contain. Cam giving B gap support here. And they're tough to move. They're really tough to move. Carol's been doing this for a while. I may have mentioned this before, but USC used to terrorize by fighting Irish. And this is how this is why you don't play too much two man under with a guy who can run. <laughs> or that will happen to you. <laughs> but yeah. USC used to show complete and utter disregard for Notre Dame up front. They used to just sit in the base rush, rushing four, rushing three, rushing two. They just had no respect for Tommy Reese or Jimmy Clausen. And it used to frustrate the hell out of me. Here's just a straight draw. That'll happen sometimes. The other guys are getting paid too. They catch them going up the field a little bit too, too much. much. There's a, you can see that bubble here. Look at that. That's where they pop it. A little delay. Too deep shell. Are they going to stay in it? Nope. They're going to drop. Robber. Is it now going to be man or zone? Who's dropping down? This time it's uh, Earl Thomas dropping down. And this is man one all the way. And again, you want to create that funnel Here. Protect the middle of the field at all costs. Force that ball to the sidelines and wide. If you lose leverage to the inside, that's fine. Like right here, that's okay. Because you have a robber here to give you help. But you want the ball thrown short into the sidelines. That's the, this, is, this is a very tough throw to make. Very tough. It's got to be perfect. And again, Sherman does not switch sides ever. He's always on that left side. He's not following around, you know, Wayne or T.Y. Hilton. He's... Always on that side. So out of one half of football, you saw two deep, what, maybe twice, three times? Again, again, Sherman's always on the left side, and he is showing cushion. Brandon Browner is pressed up. This time they have a nickel defensive back on the field. But we've seen them in plenty of situations against three wide stay in base. The look does not change. Wow, 
different. We're just in Pops one. It's a rarity. <laughs> Chancellor again, he's basically playing linebacker here. He's basically playing the will. He's playing strong side this on this play. And they gash him there. Looking at Sherman's cushion. This is cover three all the way. And this is textbook, you know, Tampa 2 principles. But it's just based out of a cover three single high look instead of a two deep look with the middle linebacker running through. There's nothing there. You force the ball to be dumped off in front of you. Nothing. Nothing here. Nothing here. Nothing. Force to go short here, and then you want to converge. Same principle as um, Kiffin teaches with the Tampa 2. Converge and limit that to a 4-5 yard gain. Force the offense to take that all game long. Again, there's Cam again. He's everywhere. That's Kiffin all the way. You know, in that flexed hybrid 3 4 look with 4-3 personnel, 4-man rush again, they haven't seen them bring more than 5 yet, you know, not every team in the league can play like this, you know, most teams they have to play games up front and trick you, not them, not Seattle, again, look doesn't change, single high. Bail. That's your tip off, and it's some sort of cover three. Right there, just before the snap of the ball, Sherman is pressed. This is three deep all the way. Sherman is in press. Browner is in bail. You're going to see the jam and redirect of the slot right here. Look up top at the slot. Browner's bailing right now. Jam redirect. And we got a sack fumble. This is Ripley's pattern match. This is, this is basically Saban, Carroll, and Kiffin all in one play. Four-man rush. You got your pattern match. On the slot seams, the redirect matched. Matched. He's done. Done. And the deep middle's accounted for. Four man rush. And they get their sack fumble turnover. That's the trifecta. And we can pretty much end it there. I mean, look at this. This is just everything that you want. That's, that's the coup de grace. That's, that's, that's just perfect. Straight up field. 
Avril gets a sack fumble. That is Avril, not Clemens. Well, Clemens got the sack. Avril recovered it. So, yeah. This was fun. I like doing this. Hope you guys enjoyed this. A little bit different. And I can do this for <laughs> pretty much every team in the league if I wanted to. But this was fun. Studying what they do is very, very interesting. Especially how they use Sherman, Browner, and Chancellor. But hope you guys enjoyed. That's a little bit of the Seattle Seahawks uh, defense broken down and discussed and comparing it with the uh, Tampa 2 and some of the um, inspiration behind how Pete Carroll developed this. So hope you guys enjoyed. Talk to you all later. Peace.